So uh, when we do go back to it, um, we do think about the teasing and bullying. If we go back one slide, please. Just, um, the teasing and bullying are normative behaviors. We need to keep that part in mind. Okay, they are actions that will occur in all social groups, um, and they will occur with different levels of frequency depending on the rules of the social group. Um, they both have social purposes. Uh, teasing, as I said, does involve some uh, indication to the group and to the child that's the object of teasing that you are engaging in something that we don't accept. And that's a problem. Um, bullying does, however, also control the resources that are available. The social resources available, the physical resources available, uh, sometimes monetary resources are available. But most often in elementary school, school kids, uh, the resources that are being available with regard to bullying have to do with access to other kids. So bullying works to be able to keep kids from one another. Okay, so that, that's very often clear. And it also provides some benefits to the bullier. So a child that bullies is often in charge of the group and is often able to kind of control what other people do. This is a very important process. They cannot be eliminated. Every sociologist that has looked at this problem says, you know, these ideas that talk about zero tolerance, where they believe that in some fashion it's equal to zero occurrence, that's absolutely impossible. The, the wise sociologists say, this is, this is like saying that you can eliminate crime. It can't be done. You have to work on controlling it. You have to work on managing it. It's not uh, because it does serve these social purposes. So zero tolerance can be a policy, but it doesn't mean that there's zero occurrence. And certainly when we're talking about children who are below puberty, who are not highly sophisticated with regard to their thinking, uh, despite how bright they are, they're not, they have a certain pattern of behavior. We can't expect that when we say to those children, we have a zero tolerance policy, this should not happen, that they're going to be able to control themselves and make it not happen. So we do have to recognize that zero tolerance can be a principle, but it needs to be uh, recognized that it's still going to pop up and occur. What it means when we do want to be able to work on making sure that there's as close to zero occurrence as, pol as possible, it does mean that the policies that are in place, the administrative procedures that are in place, and also the programs that are present to be able to design things need to be persistently present if we are going to reduce these actions. It's not going to happen just because of one assembly. It's going to happen because of the atmosphere, the actions that are taken every day. Okay. So the, um, it does mean that, as I said, teasing can occur in friendly relationships. And as I said, teasers and bulliers are not unpopular kids. They are often the most popular kids. Um, also, what we also need to keep in mind is that within our relationships as adults, we do demonstrate these behaviors and model them for children all the time, especially with teasing. We do show that, and we do engage in those actions, and we need to remember that, because kids are watching us all the time. We do often also engage in some kind of bullying or some talk about bullying, uh, because we often say things like we are going to do something to somebody if they make us mad, or we would like to do something to somebody because they, they've harmed us, or uh, you know, we get, we get angry with people that cut us off or you know, block us from getting to the subway. We do different things that might indicate to the children that engaging in some physical threats or physical behavior might be the appropriate thing. And what has been found is that programs that to, to utilize have to utilize approaches that improve the social atmosphere, and indicate that these things are not desired, but make sure that that's communicated each and every day. Um, but they also need to work on something else for some kids. And that has to do with coping skills. And I want to be able to talk a little bit about that as well, in addition to some of the interventions. <coughs> so let's talk about the interventions that have been found to be effective. 